If you find yourself in your business overwhelmed, you don't have time to get everything done that you need to, um, you're having challenges delegating your team to take tasks forward for you so it doesn't all rest on your shoulders as the owner to move the business forward, I've got something to show you that really made a big difference in my mindset and outlook on how I was running my business, okay? So for 20 years or so, I've, I was in specialty retail. That's what I did for work. And uh, 11 of those years, I owned a business, two stores, 25 employees. Uh, we did nearly 2 million in the best year that we had. So yeah, successful business by a lot of measures, right? And the business relied way too much on me, which is something that I inherited from the previous owner, frankly. You know, is the business really didn't operate itself the way that it could or should. And I just want to speak to that real quick because that's such a major part of what we do with the businesses we work with is help the owners control their time so that we can use their time to do much more effective work as you know, owners work with that time versus doing the operations of the business or being the first person that gets a phone call when something's not going exactly the, as planned, right? So let me show you something that really helped me and I hope it'll help you as well. So in a business, you got ownership and you've got the team dynamic and you've got customers and you got the business itself, you know, the profitability, the health and success and growth of the business itself. So if we, if we kind of use these four categories to think about things, um, it's helpful to illustrate the point here. So when I had the business uh, previously, the specialty retail business, as the owner, I had my hands all over hiring, all over team training, anything that the team was doing, I said, hey, that's that'll be great. Uh, before you send that purchase order in or before you make that update to the schedule or before you uh, get back to that customer with that with that issue that you're trying to work out or uh, uh, order that you're trying to work out, just run it by me first. So I had my hands all over every aspect of what the team was doing and that slowed us down, I guess is the point. And with that business, as the owner, I had my hands all over what the team had going on, right? When it comes to hiring, it was all me. When it was firing, it was all me. When it was training, you know, it was all me. Yeah, you know, I coordinated all that. I might not have done all of it, every aspect of it, but I certainly had my hands all over it. Um, scheduling was all me. Um, I remember the previous owner said to me one time, it's your money. You know, when it came to letting someone else write the schedules and do a couple of different aspects of the business, handle a couple of different aspects of the business. And that stuck in my mind and that further reinforced that I really needed to have my hands all over every aspect of the business, right? And as the owner in that business, I also had my hands all over everything that had to do with the customer experience in our store. So I was, I was guiding and kind of, I was the point person for all the merchandising that was happening. When special orders would be taking place, I would be combing through all those and checking behind everybody. Uh, on the sales floor, I was on the sales floor a ton. A ton and anytime I was on the sales floor those customers guess what they recognized me and they would want to work with me right and how did that make me feel it made me feel good that they wanted to see me and wanted to work with me however I was tying the hands of my team when I was on that sales floor by by stepping in and being the front person and taking care of those customers I was stepping in front of my team and not allowing them to do that work you know allowing them to take care of our customers and frankly, I slowed that down too, you know. Um, there's no way one person can take care of all these things is the point. And as the owner, I had my hands all over every aspect of the business. All, every purchase order that went out, I had to approve. I hand signed every single check that went out to pay invoices. When it came to inventory controls, it was all me. When it came to any systems or what uh, processes that we had in place, it was all me. Uh, thinking through that for the benefit of the business and uh, let's see the profit and loss keeping up with that uh, 
working with my admin person who was a rock star, you know, had, had great team members. That wasn't a problem for me. I had great team members. I simply had never been taught how to, how to work, with, work through them to move the business forward, right? So anyway, what do you think? How many hats does this person wear that's got their hands all over all that, those aspects of the business? You know, there's probably three or four hats to be worn here taking care of your team. There's probably three or four or five hats to be worn here taking care of the customers and making sure they've got a great, consistent, and high quality experience doing business with us. There's probably three or four hats here. You know, something I haven't mentioned is marketing, right? So I had my hands all over the marketing as well too. So there's three or four or five hats here. One person should not be wearing 12 to 15 hats in the business. And if that's you, I think you'll appreciate what I've learned. What I've learned is, and this is, this is how we guide the businesses we're working with to such a different outcome that they've, than they've experienced before. If we don't put systems in place in the business, then the team does not have systems to manage, which means we have to manage our team. Who here likes to be managed? Not one of us. Who likes to follow a great leader? Yeah, I'll follow a great leader. That's a, that'd be something I'm interested in doing. I can't operate as a leader if there aren't systems in place because I've got to manage the team because there aren't systems in place. Once the systems are in place so that the team can really take, consistently take care of our customers in a really strong way, now I can really lead my team because the team is managing the systems, okay? And when the team takes care of the customers really consistently, the customers continue to do business with us, continue to bring us referral activity, and that helps us to grow the business. And as the business grows, that supports the ownership. The ownership has more resources to move the business to the next level. So what we are looking to do uh, by implementing the right the right systems and the right methodology to approach growing this thing is the owner should only need to be concerned on the day to day with leading the team and developing the team. The team is fully responsible for taking care of the customers. So as an owner, I don't really have to get my hands on that. And I've got management in place to take care of that when it, so it doesn't come to my phone as soon as something goes a little sideways. There's systems in place for that. The customers support the business and the business supports ownership. So if there's three or four hats to be worn here and three or four here and four or five here, 12, 15 hats, whatever it is, how much easier is it once I've only got three or four hats to wear? I've reduced by two thirds conservatively the, the bandwidth and the energy that I've got to be a steward of I can focus that into taking care of my team and really cultivating leadership in the team, cultivating great management practice, holding the team accountable. If the team's got systems in place to take care of the customers, all I need to do is take care of the team and everything else works itself out in a really strong way. And what happens is now that, now that the business is taking care of the ownership in a lot stronger way without me having to have my hands all over it, as before, I can, and I've got more resources, right? I've got more financial resources and more time bandwidth and, and energy. So I can afford time and finances to grow my team, which helps me to grow the opportunities in sales with our customers and that experience, improve that experience. The customers bring us more business and that brings ownership more resources. And this keeps going. This keeps growing. So there are some businesses that get stuck at 500K and there are some businesses doing the same thing that you do that grow to 5 million or 50 million. And this is what they figure out. This is what, this is the recipe, very simplified, but uh, this is the recipe that they figured out. I've got to get systems in place in my business before I can, I can even think of scaling it because I am the lid for my business. 
You know, until I grow, until I look at things differently, until I structure the business so that the team can actually operate the business for me, then I'm gonna be holding the business back the whole time. So I hope this was helpful perspective. It really was a light bulb when I first saw it and made all the difference in the world in the way that I approach business. And I'll tell you, when this starts flowing this way, business gets a lot more interesting and fun because it keeps growing and it's fun to be a part of a growing business that doesn't suck the life out of you at the same time. So thanks for listening. If you'd like to talk about this for your business, please reach out. I'd be happy to schedule some time to do that. Have the best week ever. Cheers.